fast as we've seen a big, big run up in gold over the last four years or so. And that's something that was definitely talked about this weekend here at Berkshire. Joe just talked about Charlie Munger's comment that civilized people don't buy gold. This weekend, I also got the chance to sit down with Berkshire board member and Microsoft chairman Bill Gates, and he's not a huge gold fan either. Listen in. Gold today was something that both Charlie and, and Warren made pretty clear they're not a big fan of. What about you? Well, I'm certainly in that camp. There, historically, I, I did have some silver investments uh, that at a time Warren actually had some silver investments. He got out fairly quickly. You know, I, I stayed in uh, and did very well on silver. Uh, but, you know, gold is a, a very tough one because it's so psychological. And if central banks or the IMF ever uh, decided to take advantage, you know, I think countries need liquidity. Yeah. You know, hey, the, there's an asset that's not doing anything for the citizens. And then, you, you know, because it's purely psychological, it's not like people would say, oh, well, when it gets to $800 an ounce, people will buy four times as much jewelry. There's no, uh, nothing that, that steps in as a buyer at any price. It's just purely, oh, other people think it's, other people in the future will think it's worth more than it's worth today. Um, which, you know, if you think the world is scary and people are going to panic, I'm not saying that theory doesn't exist. But there is no floor if, if uh, ever people got a view. And you do, we had an uh, invention session with some people recently. As, as this price gets high and you look at a 10 to 20 year time frame, the supply equation will change. And so the bulls have to offset the fact that there'll be quite a bit, not in the near term, but uh, over a period of time. And these people are claiming that they can predict you know, gold prices out into the future, which certainly with equities, you can feel like you can. Well, there you have to understand the innovations in digital mining techniques or some new extraction techniques, which actually I, I think are, are pretty interesting. And I doubt uh, many people factor that in. All right, we've never even talked about the supply picture, but he's talking about eventually being able to increase the supply of sure. gold. You had a shareholder who asked you a question about gold over the weekend, and your response was pretty inst interesting. Berkshire versus gold, you want to talk about how that's performed over the years? Yeah, but we can go beyond that. But it certainly, when we took over Berkshire, uh, Berkshire was selling at $15 a share, and gold was selling at $20 an ounce. And, and gold is now 1600 and uh, Berkshire's 120,000. But, but you can take a broader example than that. If, if, you, if you buy an ounce of gold today and you hold it 100 years, you can go to it every day and you can, you can coo to it and you can caress it and, and you can fondle it. And, and, and 100 years from now, you'll have one ounce of gold and it won't have done anything for you in between. If you buy 100 acres of farmland, it will produce for you every year. You can use that money to buy more farmland. You can do it, all kinds of things. For, for 100 years, it'll produce things for you. And you still have 100 acres of farmland at the end of the 100 years. Uh, you could buy the Dow Jones Industrial Average for 66 at the start of 1900. Gold was then $20. At the end, it was 11400 But you'd all gotten dividends for 100 years. So a productive asset of any kind, a decent productive asset, is going to kill a non-productive asset over time. Now, in any given one-year period, five-year period, any asset can outperform another asset. What, I mean, you what, know, tulips. Why tulips don't you, why well don't you join me, Warren? Why don't you join me and buy some cows? I, I mean, I, I like your farmland, but you know, you're in Nebraska for uh, Iowa. You love well, steak. I mean, I, we we can have leather. We can have. Um, manure. Milk. We can have uh, milk. Yeah, we can geez. have meat. We'll employ well, you people. Can have the you can have the manure. I'll take the meat. <laughs> I've got plenty of the manure. No, but we'll employ people yeah. taking care of the cows. I mean, that little bar of gold that's worth 50, whatever. We had one in here. Look, I think it was worth like 60 or $70,000. I can get like so many head of cattle for that and, and be productive. That was my point. I, but you like farmland. You just too lazy to take care of the cattle or something? Pay some people. Absolutely, oh. absolutely. <laughs> have you ever tried to take care of cattle, Joe? It must be. It, I think it might be hard. I, I know I've, I've tipped a few, but I've never. Uh, have, you, have you tipped? No, I've never done it. I hope you have not tipped. <laughs> that is that's mean. Cool. It's cool. It no, is I've cruel. No, they're sweet. They're sweet, but they're not too bright. Like me. With, with land, you can get somebody else to do all the work, 
give them a percentage of the crop and you can sit back there for 100 years and get a percentage of the crop and you still got the land when you get all through. I will guarantee you that farmland over 100 years is going to be gold and so are, so are equities. <laughs> Why do you think gold bugs get so irate? Because they really come out. Yeah, it's very experiments. interesting. If you, if, you, if you go on CNBC and, and say that Bonds are kind of a poor investment. You know, people don't get mad at you. You don't even hear from the Treasury. I mean, uh, you can you can knock almost any investment, and people may get a little irritated. But when you talk about gold, uh, and of course that says something about the, about their motivations for ownership. They want people to agree with them. They want people, everybody. They want everybody to get so scared they run to a cave with gold. And and I, caves may might might be a better investment than gold. I mean, at least they're not producing more caves all the time. <laughs> so. Uh, they want they want people to be as afraid as they are because that's the, what's, what's going to produce an increase in prices. Incidentally, they're right to be afraid of paper money. I mean, they they, they have a very their basic premise that that paper money around the world is going to get worth less and less and less over time is is absolutely correct. But you just but, disagree with the investment theory beyond that. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 where they run from that, and it, uh, and they should run from it. Uh, is, is where, in my view, they make the mistake. But they have a correct basic premise. Mm -hmm. Okay.